This 3D printer is in the middle of printing the first production model 3D printed clarinet. A few months ago, I got to sit down with its creator. Hi, my name is Ryan Pereira. I'm the founder of Pereira 3D Clarinet Services, and I run a repair shop in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and I am the maker of 3D printed clarinets and accessories for clarinet and saxophone. If building your own instrument sounds like a tall order, well, it is. With this particular design, I started all the way back in 2019, so it's been roughly a three-year project. I originally came to a preliminary design for this model, for the upper and lower joints. Obviously the barrel and bell I've had for years, but this is kind of the task at hand. And so with this upper and lower joint, when I got my preliminary design, I figured I could probably get a custom maker to get key work for those joints. And so I found out pretty quickly that's not necessarily the way that it works. So I ended up having to scratch this pretty much entirely. And I started with the key work first. So how I did that is I sourced from uh, a bunch of different factories, which I had to ask for in China in order to get the price point where I wanted it to be. And so once I had that, and I found a maker that had very reliable, very durable, uh, not pliable key work, I kept rolling with that and I made the, the body around that set of keys. That took about another, let's say, year or so in order to properly fit each individual post hole, tone hole, the whole nine yards, just so the key fitting is excellent and the action is the way it needs to be. After that, I finally got a prototype of sorts. <laughs> now, one of the most interesting aspects of these instruments is the material used. Fortunately, Ryan was more than willing to talk about it. As for the material itself, I've been sticking with my 3D blackwood and 3D mahogany wood materials for several years now. And so the premise behind these materials is that the wood is ground up into particles and then it's bind together with an agent which is called polylactic acid. It's a plant-based polymer, it's based on cornstarch, um, but it, it has really great resonance qualities and I've been having great success with my barrels and bells for years with this and I thought it'd be perfect for an instrument like this. And more than that, I thought it's really important that people have a very dependable material that's not susceptible to cracking or changes due to humidity or temperature. And so because of that, this really was the front runner in my mind for a material for an instrument. And if you were curious about the two different types of wood being used. So the, the two woods that I offer are uh, 3D blackwood, 3D mahogany wood. Uh, you can see the difference in shade, whereas this one has a little bit more of a reddish brown type of hue to it. And so you'll get kind of similar qualities that you'd expect from Grenadella versus Cocobolo, whereas you might get a little bit more ping and ringing the sound from Grenadella, but you get a little bit more warmth and roundness with the 3D mahogany. Now, before we get too deep into some of the design elements for these instruments, Ryan was kind enough to let me borrow them to take them for a little test drive.
So now that we've heard them, let's hear a little bit more about Ryan's design philosophy. I myself am very fond of, you know, the polycentrical bore of R13s and that sort of thing. And so I didn't want to stray from that all too much because it's, well, obviously it's tried and true, but it offers a lot of different characteristics of projection that I really like. And so um, I decided to kind of keep that, uh, but I wanted to add a little bit more elements of German hybrid clarinets. Um, so one of the models I was very fond of was the Selmer signature instruments. And I really like the type of tone quality, the type of purity of sound that you can get with those and the controlled response that they offer. And so um, a couple of the design aspects that I modified include the lower joint design. So the bore, typically it would start flaring out around where the A flat, E flat pad is. And uh, on German clarinets, it's much, much lower. It's kind of close to where the bell tendon is. And so I kind of split the difference a little bit in order to get that same sort of focus, centered, pure quality of the sound. But then of course I had to make some adjustments to the tone holes in order to have the tuning that I wanted this to have. As a result, I got something that has that sort of nice focus and center of those German hybrid designs while having the polycentrical bore and feel of something close to an R13. One final design element to point out has to do with this tone hole right here. Like one of the big things that I wanted is to incorporate uh, an extra raised chimney for the C slash G tone hole there. Um, Cause I always felt it would help my left hand ergonomics or technique and all that sort of thing. And uh, I always really appreciated that on the instruments such as the Summer Signature or Yamaha CSGs that have that. And so um, I also found out in the process that that added some depth and character to the tone quality that I really liked. Alrighty, so originally this video was meant to be a review, but when I began to collect my thoughts and write out the script, I realized that my frame of reference was not nearly large enough to be able to confidently give my opinion as to how this instrument stacks up amongst the competition. I don't really know what the expectations are for sound quality or intonation accuracy or mechanics for an instrument at this price point. And so that makes it very difficult for me to personally review it. And it feels very unfair to put it up against the frame of reference I do have, which is for upper level professional instruments that cost anywhere from three to seven times more than this instrument. Now, with all of that being said, I would still like to offer one primary thought. I was absolutely blown away, pun intended, by the quality of sound I got from these instruments. I think not only the materials used, but also Ryan's design have resulted in a truly beautiful sound. When I played them, I definitely heard the influence of both the Selmer signature and R13 that Ryan had been looking to capture. In general, there is both a nice purity and a pleasing amount of cover in the sound that still allowed room for the instrument to maintain projection and ring. And I think while some people might find it to be on the lighter, less dense side of the sound spectrum, I found it to be lovely overall. I also found that Ryan was correct in his descriptions of the two versions. The Blackwood tends to have a little more ping and ring, while the mahogany leans towards warmth. I found these distinctions especially apparent in the Beethoven 6 excerpt you heard earlier. One additional note is that both instruments come with the option of switching out the more traditional Philadelphia model barrel to Ryan's Bold Barrel. The Bold Barrel is characterized by having a darker, more open sound, and it quickly became my personal preference while testing the instruments out. However, I only had the Blackwood version of that barrel, and so to keep everything even, I opted to do my primary recordings of both instruments with the traditional Philadelphia barrel. In regards to the other aspects of the instruments, keywork, intonation, etc., I really don't want to go too in depth. The build quality seemed good. There was a really tiny issue with a spring on the mahogany instrument, but that was very easily corrected. The only thing I would really change about the key work or key placement specifically had to do with the register key. I found it to be a little high off the body for my personal taste, but everyone has different hands and preferences. In regards to overall key work quality, 
I didn't really feel that that was something I was well equipped to judge. I think I would have to play on the instruments for an extended amount of time to really have a good idea of how the key work was going to hold up long term. That being said, Ryan did want me to mention that while the key work is nickel plated right now, he is looking to offer silver plating and perhaps gold plating in the future. So that is something to look out for. And finally, intonation wise, I really just don't know what's expected for an instrument at this price point. I've left the intonation test in the video as I think it does a good job of showing where I had some issues. Simply put, that while it doesn't tune as well as my Buffet Tosca or other similarly priced instruments that I've tested, I also wouldn't expect it to, as that is just a deeply unfair comparison. Ultimately, while I can't tell you if this instrument provides a good value compared to the competition, I can tell you that I came into this video not knowing what to expect and walked away incredibly impressed. To do what Ryan has done is nothing short of amazing. To take this new material and produce his own instruments from the ground up is such a monumental undertaking and really just makes for such an inspiring story. In my mind, he has more than proven the validity of the material and I am eager to test new instruments built from it in the future. So the next time you see Ryan at a convention or you're passing through Philly, go give his products a try you might just walk away surprised too. As always, thank you so much for watching and happy practicing.